Right, today we're going to talk about wood lice. Now, wood lice um, are kind of overlooked quite a lot. Like, if you're looking for bugs, you'll flip over a rock, you'll flick over a log, and you'll find the wood lice. And everyone just scans over them. But actually, I'm here to prove that they're a bit more exciting than what people make out. <laughs> So wood lice are characterised by a couple of things. Um, the first, they have antennae, like most invertebrates, um, but also they have 14 legs. They have seven pairs of legs, um, and they have like almost like a flattened shell, um, which they use for protection, but it also keeps in the water. Wood lice prefer cool, dark places, and this is because they still actually have remnants of gills underneath their body, which they have to keep moist in order to breathe normally. They have a tough shell on the top, which us entomologists like to call a cuticle. Um, which will keep that moisture in as well. So it's very important that they do have some moisture, but not too much because then they drown. Woodlice are detritivores, and that's just a really posh way of saying that they'll eat anything they find. Um, they'll eat bits of dead wood, they'll eat bits of fungi, animal matter, plant matter, anything they find, it's fair game. And this is really important for the ecosystems that they live in because they recycle those nutrients that are locked up in dead things, especially wood when, when nothing really eats wood. Um, so they break that down and that can be used by other organisms to grow into plants and eventually animals. Most people think there is only one type of woodlouse, but in the UK alone there are 37 types of woodlouse. The most successful of all of these species is probably the rough woodlouse, and the rough woodlouse isn't just successful in the UK, it's also really successful worldwide, and it's found everywhere really, apart from Antarctica where it's a bit cold. So the rough woodlouse has kind of got around the world by jumping on ships through potted plants, vegetables, bits of wood in ships, all kinds of things, and they have managed to migrate everywhere. Um, they're even found on the Hawaiian Islands, and that's a bit of a holiday for a woodlouse if you ask me. So woodlice are found throughout um, UK culture, and as a result, regionally, throughout the UK, they have loads of different names. Cheese logs is a really cool one, but my personal favourite has got to be cheeky pigs. It's cool, right? So most of their regional names are based around the fact that they are like pigs, but they don't look like pigs. That's not the reason. It's because they smell like pigs. And this is because wood lice cannot wee or, or urinate, if you're going to be fancy, um, like normal animals. And instead of releasing it as a liquid, they actually release it as a gas. So they have an ammonia gas, which is basically the smell of a boy's toilet. And they give this off, and that's why people refer to them as pigs, historically, of course. Woodlice do poo normally though, which is good to know, I guess, but they like to recycle these things. And so they eat their own poo, a bit like rabbits, and they do this to recycle those nutrients, especially that copper, which is quite hard to find um, in the natural environment. So they'll eat that all up and then they'll just recycle the whole thing. Woodlice are actually part of the family called Isopoda, which is a branch of the crustaceans. This means that woodlice are actually closer related to things like crabs and lobsters and shrimp than anything else. The ancestors of the woodlice uh, have actually come from the sea and some of the cousins of woodlice still live there today. Um, because they're crustaceans, they have copper-rich blood. We have iron-rich blood, so we have red blood, but because theirs is copper-based, they actually have blue blood, which is pretty cool, right? I'd love blue blood. Quite a lot of their relations still live in the sea and some of these do get quite big and they're quite freaky, actually. There's a giant isopod, which is about a foot long, so... Psh and that will do the same job as a woodlouse, but they'll do it much deeper in the ocean. And occasionally they do dredge them up. They'll chew the things that they find that have fallen on the bottom. Um, they can't hurt you, but they do look pretty gruesome. But essentially they're just a giant woodlouse that can swim, I guess. And one of my favourite relatives of the woodlouse is the tongue-biting louse. And this is a parasitic organism which makes the inside of a fish its home. And what it does is the female will swim inside the gill and it will clamp itself at the bottom of the tongue. From here, it will start to drink the blood of the tongue and clamp very, very tightly, which causes the tongue to shrink and eventually fall off. And here, the louse will actually fill the inside of the fish's mouth and it will actually become the tongue of the fish. And this is the only organism known to replace a body part of another animal. And you can see some really cool pictures where they're actually taking up the inside of the mouth and you can see their little face pop out. And Fishermen do find these occasionally, and they actually live quite successfully within the fish. So apart from the initial distress of the fish having its tongue eaten, actually it doesn't cause much difficulty for the fish to live. And they'll live quite happily with this thing, maybe even two of these things, living in their mouth. And I think that's pretty cool.
two, one, jump! 